Everybody on TikTok knows about the Gateway Experience documents, but today I'm going to introduce you to a new book that is far more interesting. In previous videos, I've presented evidence that many of the things that are popular on TikTok in the metaphysical community do appear to be propaganda and setups. What I've seen has seriously made me reconsider the Gateway Experience and the raw material and Montauk and all these things that dispersed all of these ideas out into the conspiracy and New Age communities. But of course, the question is why? What would be the point in setting all of this up and putting it out into the public? And that is where this amazing book comes in. This rather unassuming book is The Changing Images of Men, published by Stanford Research Institute's Center for the Study of Social Policy. It was edited by O.W. Markley and Willis W. Harmon, which we'll get to in a moment. And it's part of their System Science and World Order Library, Explorations of World Order. The no book was published in 1974, and this is a reprint edition from 1982 that was published by the Pergamon International Library. We'll see why that's relevant later in the video. It was contributed to by the famous mythologist Joseph Campbell, which is a little insidious when you realize that this book represents a full-scale blueprint into how to rewrite society and change all of our morals, values, interactions, and beliefs. For this video, I'm going to focus on Chapter 4, The Influence of Science on the Image of Man, and this crucial frontier for scientific inquiry, consciousness research, and parapsychology and psychic research. Page 94, they begin the section on parapsychology and psychic research. And this is not a skeptical critique. Far from it. They very clearly state that altered states can uh, aid in receiving ESP, physical states can be induced telepathically, telepathy is more likely between persons who have mutual liking, etc., emotions and emotional content can be transmitted telepathically, and on and on and on. As well as the interesting little side note here, of the four effects, most scientists have greatest reservation with respect to telekinesis, in spite of work at Boeing and in Russia. When did Boeing start getting into telekinesis? Our own conclusions go on verifying things I've been telling you in my other videos, and it's possible to train psychic abilities, that there is such a thing as an aura and it can be perceived. Electronic instrument instrumentation can further be used to detect and monitor uh, psychophysiological states which are correlated with psychic functioning, etc., etc., etc. The next section is Impact of Psychic Research on the Images of Human Kind. Describes an experiment with put off and target Stanford Research Institute where a light is flashed in one person's eyes and another person picks it up, which again is just like I was telling you about in my other videos. And it goes into, in other words, this watershed experiment appears to provide clear evidence of universal te telepathic capacity with almost complete representation for most persons of awareness of this source of knowledge. The implications of the experiment go much further. If telepathic capacity is shown to be universal and almost completely repressed, this suggests that the same may be true of a whole range of reported paranormal phenomena, clairvoyant remote perception, abnormally rapid healing, precognition, retrocognition of other lifetimes, teleportation, thought photography, and other forms of psychokinesis, and the rest. And this is the most important part of all. That clearly the dominant image of human nature in Western society today does not as yet include the potentialities implied by the vast and puzzling range of reported psychic phenomena. On the other hand, public interest in this realm is evidently growing. If Lawrence Lachan is correct in his theory, that the assumption held about reality influences the reality experienced, then changing cultural assumptions about the possibility of psychic phenomenon may have consequences for the frequency with which they are observed to occur. In other words, they know psychic ability exists. They know these phenomena are real. And they know that if they change the perceptions of the public to accept them, they will show up more often. In essence, the entire thrust of this book is in how to change people's minds, to get them to open up to new ideas and elicit changes on a societal level. And part of the changes that they'd like to make to society is the acceptance of paranormal and psychic phenomena. Now this sounds great on its face, until I tell you the rest of the story. The editor of this book, Willis Harmon, was in charge of a little outfit called IONS, the Institute for Noetic Sciences, which some of you might know because it was Edgar Mitchell's foundation. Edgar, Edgar Mitchell was the astronaut that was into psychic ability and UFOs and all of this. And they had the Institute for Noetic Sciences built around that. Now, the bad part is that IONS, the Institute for Noetic Sciences, appears to be a CIA front operation. I actually have a document from the CIA's archive talking about how it's going to use IONS and Edgar Mitchell's foundation to pay Dr. Andrea Puharish 
to bring Yuri Geller to the States and have him tested at Stanford Research Institute. And that that was how they were going to funnel money to Puharish so that it didn't trace back to them. But that's not even as bad as the next one. 1974, this was published by Stanford Research Institute privately, but it became popular with one guy who just happened to own a publishing empire and be one of the leads for a major intelligence agency. His name was Robert Maxwell. You might know him as the father of Ghislaine Maxwell. So we're already starting to see the connections here, and they are not looking good. So ask yourself, since 1974 when this all came out, and the New Age and Wicca and occult community started being built up, mainly by publications coming out of Robert Maxwell's publishing empire, was that organic? Were we really ascending towards the fifth dimension, or are we all just having a, a combined awakening? Or is there something that's gradually leading us to the acceptance of these ideas for some purpose that might not be the best? Humans are now hackable animals. You know, the, the whole idea that humans have, you know, this, they, they have this soul or spirit and they have free will and nobody knows what's happening inside me. So whatever I choose, whether in the election or whether in the supermarket, this is my free will, that's over. Free will, that's over. Now, I don't have all the answers, but I do know three things. Psychic ability is real and always has been. You can train yourself and reawaken that latent ability. And when you wake it up, you don't want those reins being held by someone like Puharish, Maxwell, or the Monroe Institute. I would urge everybody go read this book and educate yourself. I'll have it up in the Documents and Resources folder of my website. And then come on back here and let me know what you think.